Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, everything is happening and coming together. We have subtropical storm Nicole that has formed. Also, this major winter storm that is coming, bringing damage and winds, blizzards, even some ice and freezing rain with it, as well as some heavy rainfall and severe weather. So I'll break it down for you the best I can. And so far, the difference between tropical and subtropical, tropical is the winds are around the center. Subtropical is the winds are far away, like in the bands that is far away from the center. But so far they do have it right before landfall, it will be at least 69 miles per hour winds with 86 miles per hour wind gusts. So right on the edge of a hurricane, just remember this is the first outlook, the first cone for this. Now right now, Nicole is at 47 miles per hour winds and it is moving northwest at 16 miles per hour and it is predicted to stay a strong tropical storm all the way towards the Carolinas and I'm showing it will go up towards the northeast along the coast as well. At the same time they do have tropical storm watches out for northern Bahamas and you can see with the NAM 3k we only see up to 60 hours that it is coming right by y'all as it goes by towards Florida and start strengthening it up. This is where the deep ocean heat content is that I showed you yesterday. So let's go into the impacts. That's what I'm gonna show you is what the impacts will be from all this. But you can see how big the wind field is that is gonna be moving across with this. Remember, all these links are in the description for you so you can check it all out. This right here in this big white, this is after the three days. This is a three days forecast. Over here is a cone of uncertainty. They really don't know what happens past three days. This could be on the north side or the south side of this, which will change all the impacts. But once again, it's subtropical. The winds will not be around the center. Now, so far, the impacts will be reaching northern Bahamas by Wednesday morning and reaching the eastern coast of Florida by Wednesday night. But the earliest reasonable could be all the way till Tuesday night for the Bahamas and Wednesday morning for Florida. But here's the official forecast from National Hurricane Center. Nicole is forecast to be a large storm and regardless of its exact path, widespread impacts from a prolonged period of coastal flooding, tropical storm force winds, heavy rainfall, rough surf and rip currents, beach erosion are likely among much of the southeastern United States coast, the Florida East Coast and portions of the northwestern and central Bahamas during much of the upcoming week. Now, the cold could be or at near hurricane strength when it moves near the northwestern Bahamas and the east coast of Florida Wednesday and Thursday, bringing the potential for a dangerous storm surge, damaging winds, and heavy rainfall to a portion of those areas. But you also can see with the NAN 3K, since it's a better high resolution model than GFS and Euro, it's not better than HRRR, but HRRR can only see 48 hours. But you see, as it goes towards the Bahamas, it does tighten up and strengthen up right before landfall. Now, there is some dry air involved, but however, it's not going to weaken this storm too much. You can see right here at the 500 millibars on the very top of the storm, there is some dry air getting involved into this system. But you can still see on the lower level at 850 that it's not interacting with it as far as weakening it down. It will stay strong right before landfall. I believe this will go to a low grade hurricane. Now the latest update as far as we can see with the NAM 3K is as it goes over towards the Bahamas, towards Florida, the max wind gust gets all the way up to 105 miles per hour wind gusts with this system. So it is bringing some strong winds as well. But you can also see with the H wharf that it does strengthen up as it goes towards the Bahamas and does become a hurricane right before landfall for Florida goes over a little bit into the Gulf, and then comes right back. Now the GFS shows almost the same thing. It stays a little bit weaker, but it does strengthen up right before a landfall towards a hurricane, towards Florida, and it does go into the Gulf a little bit, and it does curve right back and go all up the coast. But you can tell as it goes up the coast, all the winds are gonna be east side loaded after that, so there's not gonna be no major wind impacts along the east coast. It will be for Florida and the Bahamas. But you can also see from the whole outlook that it does go over Florida and all this bluish to purple is all 50 miles per hour wind gusts plus. But as it goes up the east coast, it is not affecting the east coast with widespread 50 miles per hour plus wind gusts coming across the whole US. Euro is seeing this as well. It's not as widespread with the 50s, 
but it does show that it does go over Florida and it don't impact the East Coast too much. Now the waves are gonna start moving in tonight. But as you go into Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, seems like when the biggest part of the waves will come in. Now this is 25 foot waves that is coming and the max height is up to 40 foot waves. So somewhere it's between 20 and 40 foot waves will be coming with this system. And you can see here on the max wave height with the Euro that the max wave height actually gets up to the 40 foot marker. So it's anywhere from 20 to 40 foot waves coming with this system. Now, as you look with the GOES satellite, the NASA satellite, you can see it does strengthen up over the Bahamas as we get this big snowstorm in the center of the U.S., but it does go by Florida a little bit weaker than what the other models is showing, as well as going up the East Coast, and it does stay pretty strong, maybe interacting with that system once again in the Northeast, but just remember, all the winds will be east side loaded with this system. It will be subtropical, not tropical. Also, as this system comes in from Wednesday into Thursday, and especially Thursday into Friday, there is a good chance for some severe weather to come out of this as well. And National Weather Service has put out an outlook for Thursday going into Friday, a 15% for severe weather. For Kansas City, Missouri, Omaha, Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska, Des Moines, Iowa, and Overland Park, Kansas. This is also bringing a good bit of rainfall. So you can see with the Euro, it is bringing heavy rains, especially for Northern Bahamas, as it goes all the way up the East Coast, bringing everybody about one and a half to two plus inches of rainfall. As this next system comes by, bringing good amount of rainfall towards the Southwest and the upper Midwest. And a lot of this will be major snowfall. All this gray is all one to two inches possible for upper Midwest and a little bit for Michigan. But you got up to four feet of snow that being higher elevations for California. But you can see where it's widespread a foot of snow all the way across Wyoming, Dakotas, northern Minnesota. I'm showing is also going to be sleet and freezing rain. Chance for a good buildup of ice for y'all as well. Just widespread over a foot of snow in all of this pink. All of this blue is all three to five inches, but it's still showing four feet of snowfall for the higher elevations of California. Now you can see with the Euro that some of this is going to turn into sleet for the Dakotas as well as northern Minnesota. And it will build up a good buildup of freezing rain, especially for Dakotas and northern Minnesota. Right on that edge of snow in the north, rain in the south, freezing rain and sleet in between. It's about a half an inch of freezing rain according to the Euro for the Dakotas and a quarter inch plus for northern Minnesota. But also bringing a lot of damage and winds and blizzards as well. So everybody that's getting that foot of snow plus you do have 40, 50, even 60 in all of this red miles per hour wind gusts. Even sections with this brown where you have chances for 70 miles per hour wind gusts would it be in 40 and 50 for the central u.s so it will be damaging winds and for those that are getting snow it will be blizzards for y'all especially for the dakotas wyoming colorado y'all all getting high 60 even 70 miles per hour wind gusts in the higher elevations and 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts for the southwest so definitely a higher elevations i'll be seeing all this snow you will have blizzard conditions everybody else you're gonna be getting rain and damaging wind gusts and GFS is about the same as a year old. It brings a little bit more southern where it's going to be affecting Nebraska as well and maybe Iowa. But that's about the main difference. They both show in about four feet of snowfall for the higher elevations of California. The only difference is GFS says with a temperature battle, it could be a ice storm for northern Minnesota, maybe even northern Wisconsin and upstate Michigan. A lot of sleet. Now with your overnight temperatures making the Ground temperatures frozen, but not quite freezing as the daytime heating comes up. It won't come down as snow, but it will freeze on contact on those frozen grounds, and you could get accumulation of one to three plus inches of ice, creating a lot of power outages. GFS also shows it'll be a little bit more dip with this storm, where it brings more of a widespread 50 miles per hour wind gust towards Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Kansas, Iowa, even, even northern Missouri. This whole area right here, the Euro is not seeing. This is what GFS 
seas also. As well as getting 60 and 70 miles per hour wind gusts towards northern Bahamas and bringing 50 and 60 across Florida as it goes back across. And all these 90s you see, this is all out into the Atlantic. So we do need to watch out for Bermuda. It could be some impacts. But GFS shows that it holds its wind strength all the way across to about 60 miles per hour wind gusts, maybe a little more. Psalm 3. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Selah. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Selah. Amen. And if you've never been here before, Selah means think about what you just heard. Thank you all for your time today. God bless you and your families. May they keep you safe. I will do a short and quick update this afternoon to keep you all updated on what's going on with this tropical system. This Nicole that's going over Florida and the Bahamas and the southeast is the way it's looking. Remember, all glory goes to Yahweh, our Father in heaven, our God. And may he keep you all safe and may he weaken this storm. Because this is definitely the last thing that anybody needs right now, especially for Florida. God bless you, Florida. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you this afternoon for the update.